Bournemouth nil, Arsenal 4. Welcome to the Loaded Cannon. I'm buzzing. So, so good today. I said a few weeks ago, Martin Erdegaard is world class and it's about time we had the confidence to just say it. You know, it's one of those things when people talk football, everyone's really, really reluctant to put someone in the world class category and sort of like no one wants to go first. It's very easy to say, oh, you know, um, Haaland is world class and Mbappe is world class. Yes, we all know that. But actually, do you know what? When you watch someone week in, week out and you see how good they are, you see that they're so consistent at home, away from home, on the ball, off the ball, scores goals, gets assists. Martin Erdegaard is world class. I said that a few weeks ago. Since then, he um, signed a new contract and he's put in a couple of brilliant performances. And I'm really, really glad because against Tottenham, I did say he was below his usual level. And the first 15 minutes of the game today against Bournemouth, I was thinking, Martin, come on. I, I wanted to see that bounce back because I'm so used to seeing him play consistently well. You hardly ever see him have bad games followed by another bad game. It's just not an Erdegaard thing to do. And oh my God, today did he prove himself that he is not going to have a bad game following another bad game. And even against Tottenham, I say a bad game. It's just that it wasn't at his usual, usual standards. Today, he sparkled. He was unbelievable today. And you know what? His, um, he was involved in every single goal. The cross for the first goal, the vision, the perfection of that pass, just beautiful, joy to behold. J Gabriel Jesus, I personally don't think he was going for goal at all. He was going to header it back across goal. But obviously, because of the momentum of that ball, anyone that's played football knows that you really have to get a lot of purchase on the header to make that ball go literally backwards instead of, um, instead of sort of across. And he didn't get enough on it, which is why I think it sort of ended up going towards goal. No way did he mean to sort of attempt to finish at goal. But we got a bit of luck. I readily admit we got a bit of luck, but it's those sorts of passes from Martin Erdegaard. When you put the ball in that region of the pitch, you know, so close to goal, and, and you, you pick out a person with that much precision, you deserve the luck. Because then, you know, in, in such close quarters to the goal, anything can happen. And that's exactly what, you know, what you want when you've got a player like Martin Erdegaard. Go and put it in that perfect spot and then the luck will flow. And that's what happened. Bakayo Saka doesn't score many with his head. I'd love to find out how many headers he has scored for Arsenal because that is going to be a collector's item. And you even saw him in a celebration, like pointing to his head. He was buzzing about it as well. And Jesus, brilliant movement for that goal. Even though he might not even get the assist because it came off the woodwork, I don't really know what the rules are on that. But his movement is really, really good. And it would have been nice if he got a goal today um, because I felt like his performance warranted one. But... Overall, you look at what he does, how good he is on the ball and all of the work that he does. He, he created chances today as well for other people. He was brilliant. But back to Erdegaard. First goal, his cross, that was the key pass. You know, sometimes with goals, you look at the goal scorer, you look at the assist. Sometimes people talk about the pre-assist, you know, which I'm not a huge fan of myself. But actually, I think the, um, one, of the, one of the things that's lacking in football stats for me is who played the, the sort of the key pass in a goal? Because they talk about key passes, but not necessarily that lead to goals. So for me, sometimes like it, it might even not even be a pass. It might be the, the key sort of involvement in the goal. And that might be a dummy, for example, that, that opens everything up. Erdegaard, for me, was the key in that goal. Then he goes and scores the penalty that Nketiah did really, really well to win. And I'll talk about Nketiah later. Then he goes and wins a penalty. And, uh, and then it goes and gets given to Kai Havertz, which I thought was a lovely touch. And then he goes and gets the assist for the fourth goal for Ben Wright. Martin Erdegaard was everything in this game. He was just, he left his stamp in every single key moment of that game and was absolutely brilliant. Man of the match. If he wasn't your man of the match, then get in the comments below and explain to me what game you were watching and who was better than him on the park today. And if he was your man of the match, smash that like button for Martin Erdegaard because... I want to see how many people agree with me. So smash the hell out of that like button for Martin Erdegaard. Now, let's talk about the penalty that Kai Harvard scored. For me, that tells you so much about this team, the togetherness, the culture, what has been instilled into this team. I love it. Obviously, the players know the scrutiny that 
um, you know, new signings will get when they're struggling. And Kai Havertz, obviously, like, he, he hasn't been playing well. And even today, he didn't play well. I'm going to be really honest about that. He didn't play well today. I can't think of many games he's played well for Arsenal. In fact, like, it has been very, very underwhelming. And a lot of people, including myself, were a bit, were a bit miffed at the signing. I really, really hope that not so much the goal, like not one swipe of a leg when it's a penalty. That's not going to give him the confidence. But I hope what gives Kai Havertz the confidence is to see how much backing he has got from his teammates, how much they want him to succeed, and also the fans as well, how much they got behind him and how much they clearly want him to succeed. I love that. I thought the team um, and the fans, they, they were so good to Kai Havertz. So I'm really, really glad to see that. And hopefully Kai Havertz can push on from here and start to kind of show why we spent so much money on him. It's not, um, you know, it's not been a great start for him. Hopefully we look back on this and we say this was the turning point. Now, Declan Rice. I have to speak about Declan Rice. The guy is pure silk. You know, sometimes I speak to Declan Rice and they, they say, um, people say to me like, what's so good about him? They just can't sort of understand it because he's not a player that is incredibly flashy and also he plays so deep that it's um it's harder to spot what he does because it doesn't really make the highlights do you know what i mean like they're not going to show him getting out of a sticky situation with consummate ease on match of the day they show the goals and the assists and you know all of that sort of stuff but honestly Declan rice there was one moment in the game today and i'll cover it properly in my five at five tomorrow which is just watch that. That is what Declan Rice brings you. He takes so much pressure off the team. And last season, I spoke repeatedly about Arsenal lacking bite in duels and how we come across, uh, how we come off worse in the duels. We always seem to be losing duels against opposition. Declan Rice almost single-handedly corrects that. Every single game, you look at him, he wins his, most of his duels. He's unbelievably good in the middle of the park. So good on the ball. He drives forward, doesn't feel the pressure. His game management is unbelievable. His leadership is unbelievable. I'm such a massive Declan Rice fan. Just absolutely brilliant again today. And I maintain that against Tottenham, if he didn't go off, I would have been confident that we would have gone and won that game. Is, and that's not because Jorginho made the mistake. He's just that good. He creates a sense of calm, gives so much protection to the team. What a signing he's turning out to be. And Ketia gets a lot of stick, but he won a really, really good penalty today. His pace in the penalty box causes hassle. It does. It causes havoc. So I was happy for him as well. And uh, gutted from Will Smith-Rowe. I'm so glad to see Smith-Rowe back in the fold, getting minutes. And um, look, he could have had two goals today, but, you know, Somehow, the keeper pulled off two brilliant saves against uh, Smith Rowe and, uh, yeah, gutted for him that he didn't score. Man City lost today. For me, that is another massive, massive highlight. Obviously, Man United lost, but, what, you know, they're just a mid-table team. They're not even rivals, so forget about them. We're talking about the biggest team in Manchester, Man City, who are actually title challengers. Thankfully, they lost today. Who would have thought it? Arsenal only one point behind Man City now. In fact, Tottenham and Liverpool kick off later. Liverpool could be top of the league. Where did that come from? It's crazy. If they beat Tottenham, which hopefully they do, obviously, they go top of the league. And now, if Arsenal beat Man City at, uh, at home after our next game against Lawns in the Champions League away, we go above them in the league. And, you know, a couple of weeks back, I was talking about the fact that if they win the game, they're seven points clear. Football is just a brilliant, brilliant game, isn't it? Anything can happen. And the Premier League is just box office. Brilliant performance by Arsenal today. We'll look out for my five at five tomorrow. I'll be praising the away crowd especially because I thought they were fantastic as well. Take care. See you for my five at five tomorrow. Come on, Arsenal.